forget everything you've heard about DLSS in Warzone. We're going to start off with visual performance at 1080p. This benchmark location I specifically selected because the antenna array really accentuates the subtle detail that DLSS brings to the table. You've likely heard that DLSS makes the game look blurry, especially during motion or at long distances. That's mostly untrue. Let's start stationary. We can even pause and take a closer look at the power line tower here. We notice it looks particularly less jagged and less blurry with DLSS on. Okay, that's stationary. So now let's test this during motion. I'll freeze frame again so we can properly examine it. And we don't even need to zoom in to notice that every setting has gotten more blurry. However, Filmic has become insanely more blurry and SMAA T2X is pretty blurry as well. However, there is no blur noticeable on SMAA 1X or anti-aliasing disabled. If you were trying to spot an enemy in this white and red tower over here, DLSS holds a significant visual advantage during motion. Especially during motion, the power line, antenna array, and tower look amazing on the quality setting. With increased crispness, definition, and depth. The reason for this is because DLSS is particularly good at anti-aliasing. This means DLSS excels at making the edges of textures very sharp and well defined. By the way, this is what the SS in DLSS stands for, 64x super sampling anti-aliasing, more commonly referred to as SSAA. This is why when you turn on DLSS, anti-aliasing options become disabled. The other thing that DLSS does is to reduce your GPU load by rendering the game at a lower resolution, thus increasing your frame rate. Then it uses NVIDIA's new Tensor Cores, which are found on all RTX cards, to upscale the image to your chosen native resolution, while adding a little extra sharpness filter as well. Now, this is where the DL in DLSS comes in. It stands for Deep Learning. It's an AI that is trained using 16K resolution images on how to best upscale the image, improving Activision's algorithm for doing so. And yes, this does mean the quality and power of DLSS will improve over time as it learns more and more. All right, let's talk about the blur. It's not what you think it is. First off, this blurring you see on the ultra performance on the antenna array, it's not due to the poison circle. The lower setting ultra performance does in fact blur the edges of textures in certain scenarios. However, as we move towards the quality setting, the antenna array quality improves to the point that it just plain out rivals all the other settings. So the quality setting causes no blur on the edges of textures, but lower DLSS choices do. This is true when we are stationary as well as when there is motion. Now there is another type of blur. This one has to do with the actual texture. So even though the edges of textures look better due to improved anti-aliasing, the actual textures themselves will look ever so slightly more blurry. It's subtle enough that we should bust out the magnifying glass to be able to examine it properly. Clearly, some fine details in the hat are lost, as they are on the chest armor as well. Unfortunately, even the quality setting doesn't improve DLSS's ability to upscale texture bitmaps much. So I'm going to call the texture quality of DLSS acceptable. This part is kind of subjective, so make your own opinion and slap it in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the sub button on your way. What isn't subjective though is that even if enemy textures look slightly worse, it won't affect your ability to see them. Meanwhile, the improved anti-aliasing benefit from DLSS would actually help you see enemy outlines at a distance. Our rifle is a good example of how anti-aliasing and textures come together in DLSS. On ultra performance, DLSS is making a lot of mistakes upscaling our rifle's detail and unfortunately the superior anti-aliasing cannot make up for it. But on quality, there is truly no discernible difference here. Most of your gameplay is going to look like this, with some motion and no noticeable texture quality difference during gameplay. But there is a tiny difference on higher resolution textures if you pay close enough attention. Honestly, it'll be mostly noticeable on the ultra performance setting. 
Now, there is one aspect we will all agree DLSS performs badly on. Due to the nature of tree textures, they can sometimes look absolutely horrendous on ultra performance. On the quality setting, they look okay, but often will underperform the results of DLSS off. Again, I know you may have heard DLSS performs worse during motion, this simply is not true. But let's test it again on this as well. Once again, we have some trees looking like Minecraft, but the edges of textures are still more well defined even during fast motion. I know I'm being a bit harsh on the trees since they are the worst offenders of DLSS in Warzone, but I should point out they don't always look horrendous. I am purposely showing you the worst cases I found to emphasize what the biggest weakness of DLSS actually is. This is either because Activision didn't train DLSS's AI on tree textures, or they just purposely made it a low priority texture. Alright, now that we understand the visual differences of DLSS in terms of anti-aliasing and texture quality, let's look at the performance difference. Nvidia designed the tensor cores to handle high resolutions such as 4K, so naturally 1080p is barely utilizing these tensor cores even on the quality setting. So let's compare this again at 1440p. Now that the tensor cores are being utilized more, we see a bigger boost in FPS over traditional anti-aliasing methods. DLSS is designed to shine at higher resolutions, since rendering a lower resolution image reduces the GPU load and allows DLSS to use the tensor cores instead. In case you're wondering, tree textures continue to have the same issue with no improvement as we increase the resolution. Now, I know at this point you want to see 4K resolution, me too. So, with 4K resolution pushing those tensor cores to their capability, we see the higher DLSS choices start to really cost us a lot of frames here. Dropping 20 frames to go from performance to balanced is kind of hard to justify. The performance oriented choices are starting to look more useful at 4K. I certainly do still heavily recommend DLSS for its improved anti-aliasing and higher FPS, but which option of DLSS is best for you will vary for a few reasons. But what the choice should depend on the most is your video card and how many tensor cores it has. This video is recorded on an RTX 3080, which has 272 third generation tensor cores. Lower end RTX cards will have less tensor cores. Every RTX video card will perform differently here. Now, in order to know what your individual performance will be, I've put together a chart of what you should expect from your video card. This data is a collective effort with several friends helping me. You guys know who you are, thank you. The data has turned out far more accurate than I expected. Since all of my friends' setups are different with different settings, their actual FPS won't mean much for us, but when I translate their results to a percentage change in FPS, clear patterns do emerge. The weaker the 3000 series GPU is, the more FPS you will gain going from Filmic T2X to DLSS Ultra Performance. This makes sense since the GPUs are weaker and you're reducing their workload. Going from Ultra Performance DLSS to Quality DLSS has very little FPS cost at 1080p. Unfortunately, the RTX 2000 series doesn't seem to do nearly as well despite their higher tensor core counts. This is obviously due to the fact that their tensor cores are the older second generation. Now, going from ultra performance DLSS to quality DLSS is also interesting. The more tensor cores we have, the less percentage of FPS is lost. The 3090 GPU seems to be so powerful that reducing the GPU load has little impact on FPS at 1080p or 1440p, but those tensor cores are still pushed to their limit on 4K. The final recommendation for DLSS will be DLSS set to quality for all 3000 series cards at 1080p because up to about a 10% FPS loss is worth it for the best visual quality. However, at 1440p I find it hard to justify a 15 to 20% FPS loss going from ultra performance to quality. So setting DLSS to balanced is recommended. You'd be saving some reasonable frames and the visual quality will be almost indistinguishable. 
on 4K, we're well into the 20 to 30% area of loss, which is substantial, making performance DLSS look mighty attractive, as you'd be enjoying the amazing visuals while retaining the majority of the massive FPS boost that DLSS offers over traditional anti-aliasing. Now, the RTX 3000 series data I feel very confident in, as the data I received was surprisingly consistent between users. Everything was within 5% between different users. Unfortunately, the RTX 2000 series data wasn't nearly as consistent between users. I've also benchmarked the visual and performance difference of every visual setting in Warzone in this video over here. So if you enjoyed this video, I guarantee you'll love this one even more. I also do this for other games. Don't forget to sub. Till next time, happy gaming.